and welcome back to another video of Kelp Nerd. I'd like to start off today's video by apologizing about how long it's been since I uploaded my last video. It's been something around seven months. Uh, yeah, that was definitely not how long I figured it would take for me to get out another video. Uh, I just kind of got busy and had other things that I had to do and kind of put the channel to the side. But hopefully I'll be able to keep making videos and definitely not take seven months uh, to upload another video. I'll try to keep my upload schedule around a video a month. It might be, a, um, the average might be a little bit less than that some months when I'm more busy. But I'll try to keep bringing that content to you guys. So without further ado, uh, today's video is going to be on golf. Again, I do apologize for taking this long to make a video, but hopefully uh, this will be a very enjoyable one for you. So let's get right into the program and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run program mini golf right here. And this is a graph screen program, which I do not do extremely often just because it does take a little bit longer to make, but they are great and fun games. So as you can see, I'm moving the cursor. This is just the normal trace function. Uh, this is just where you want to aim. So you can aim anywhere on the screen. The ball will go right to where you aim on the screen. Uh, it uses uh, Bress and Ham's line algorithm. So it will move slowly towards that. And if it hits a pixel that is filled in, like any of the obstacles or the walls, it will bounce off that. So your ball is over here in the corner. It's just the singular pixel. And then the hole is the, uh, it randomly generates anywhere along the Y axis here. And it's just that big block of nine dots. So you can aim anywhere you want. I'm gonna try and aim and see if I can go a little bit higher here, I suppose. Then you will click enter when you're satisfied with whatever angle you have. And then you get to select your power by using the up and down arrows. As you can see, when I press up, the power does go up. And when I press down, the power goes down. And I will explain what power does a little bit later. I can show you the exact line where it calculates how far your ball will travel. Um, but I'm gonna try about power five. I will click enter and you can just barely see but the ball is moving there. And I will, um, when I demonstrate the game, um, as a time lapse, I will turn my contrast up just a little bit because then you can see it just a little bit better. And I did hit the theta right there, but it's gonna bounce off the E. Uh, I kinda got lucky with how it played. And then I can move my cursor and shoot right towards here. And I'll bring my power up just a little bit. And as you can see, you get as many tries as it takes. And then it will count your score at the end of as many holes as you want to play which right now I have it set to three, but you can play as many holes as you'd like. So that's basically how the game works. You just play multiple holes and you get your score at the end. So now I'll do a time-lapse demonstration of me playing the game. So there was the game and now let's get into the code. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to show you how do you change your contrast on your calculator. Uh, if you're wondering, when I said I was going to change my contrast um, to make the screen, uh, the dark pixels a little bit darker, so you could see the ball move a little bit better, um, you just click second and then use the arrow key and you can hold it. And as you can see, my whole screen got darker. Second arrow key and you can hold it down and you can just faintly see right there that it is still on. I like to keep mine around six uh, because it's just, just good for the battery and you can see it pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click program. I'm gonna edit mini golf and you will create a new program when you go and make it. Uh, and you can call it whatever you want. It does not necessarily have to be mini golf. Okay, axes off, coordinates off and label off. You may not find those. I don't know if you can find those in the catalog. Uh, the easiest way to find them is second and zoom. And you can see right here, there's axes off. So if you go over there and click enter, uh, it will give you axes off and all of the other ones are there. Zero store into S. For L comma one comma three, clear draw. Zero store into X min, 94 store into X max. Zero store into Y min, 62 store into Y max. X min and X max, Y min, Y max. They can be found in vares, window vares, 
And right there, you can see they are right there. Then uh, for k comma zero comma two, horizontal zero plus k, horizontal 55 minus k, so that's going to be forming our border. Uh, and then also the vertical borders, vertical zero plus k and vertical 94 minus k, and then end. And text zero comma four comma quote mini golf, and that is just a normal minus. To find text, the easiest way to do it, remember, if you cannot find a command, you can go ahead and check the catalog, which is second zero. And this is an alphabetical list of almost everything on the calculator. So then if I were to click the key associated with T right here, uh, you can see right there is text. Uh, but the easiest way to find it and a way that you'll find a lot of these things is in the draw menu. So second program gives you the draw menu. And as you can see, clear draw line and at the very bottom will be text and also stuff that we'll be using later on, like pixel on and point on and stuff like that. And then text zero comma 64 comma quote space and power and then a little colon right there. And nope, there was no space at the end of that. Three store into R, text at zero comma 87 comma R. For K comma zero comma seven, line from 41 comma 62 minus K comma 62 comma 62 minus K. And 10 store into A and 50 store into B. So A comma or B comma A when we actually do as a pixel coordinate is going to be where our ball is. And then I just erase there just to make sure there's nothing there. Label one. 87 store into Q, rand int from 8 to 49 store into P, point on at Q comma P comma 2, and pixel on at Y max minus P comma Q. For K comma 1 comma rand int between 10 and 17, text at rand int, and this is generating all of the obstacles, text at rand int from 10 to 53, and then a comma, rand int 18 through 80, and then sub, so anything from this string, we pick a random character from here from one to seven and only take one of them. These characters in the string, uh, I just picked some that I thought would look nice. You can pick whatever characters you want. For example, uh, you could do uppercase and lowercase O's. Those look like little circles or maybe a Q or something like that. Um, and if you do have more than seven, just change this second number from seven to whatever number you have. Uh, but otherwise, you can do whatever you want in there. And then an end for our for loop. Repeat until C is equal to 2. Input, that is the little cursor that goes around the screen uh, when you're selecting where you want to go. S plus 1 store into S, that's our shots number, which keeps track of how many shots the player has taken. Uh, X store into I, and then a colon Y max minus Y store into J. Absolute value of B minus J store into G. 1 store into M. If B is greater than J, negative 1 store into M. Negative absolute value of A minus I store into H and 1 store into N. If A is greater than I, uh, negative 1 store into N, make sure you use the actual little negative sign here, not a minus sign. Um, G plus H store into E. Repeat until K is equal to 105. Get key store into K. Min of 7 and max of 1, R plus 1 if K is equal to 25, if you hit the up arrow. Minus 1 if K is equal to 34, if you hit the down arrow, store into R. Text at 0, 87, comma R. So this is the select part where um, when the, up in the corner it says power and then you get to select whatever you need to. That's what that code is doing. End. And then this is the actual distance that your shot will travel. 15R minus 11, uh, multiplied by the fact that R is equal to one. So it, if R is equal to one, your shot will only travel four spaces. Um, you can adjust that if like, if you made this 10, now it will travel five spaces if uh, your power is one. I wanted to give an option that would go ver a very short distance, no matter where you were. And then all the other ones will add 15 on to whatever it is. So you can kind of guess uh, about how far it is in pixel distance and then pick your power from there, um, just like that. Zero store into F, zero store into C, and zero store into W. While K is greater than F and C is not equal to one and C is not equal to two, 
we're gonna run all the code inside here. Uh, k is greater than f, k was the distance that we set, uh, how far it would go. So while that is greater than the number of runs that the thing has gone through. So now we're getting into the part where it's Bressenham's line algorithm. And there is a great Wikipedia page on this, so I will be putting that down in the description if you'd like to learn more. There's also some pretty good videos out there. I'm sure you can find uh, quite a few uh, really good descriptions of it, so I won't take very much time and explain how it works, just probably a brief description. So again, check the description for that. If the absolute value of B minus, in parentheses here, Y max minus P is less than or equal to three, so in other words, if you're the absolute value of the distance from the goal, wherever your ball is, subtracting the distance from the goal, if that's, let's say, I don't know, 17, and then this isn't true, that means we want to keep running because the ball hasn't hit the goal. But if this is less than 3 and this one is less than 3, the absolute value of A minus Q is less than 3, then that means the ball has reached the goal. And the reason it has to be absolute value is because you don't know which direction the ball is approaching the goal. It could be a little bit below it, but it's still uh, a valid distance away from it. It's just negative. So we just get rid of that negative with an absolute value. 2 storm to C and 2E storm to O. F plus 1 storm to F. If the square root of Y max plus Q minus A squared plus P minus B squared is less than 9, 1 storm to C. Pixel off at b comma a, if pixel test b comma a plus n at negative n storm to n, if pixel test at b plus m comma a, uh, then negative m storm to m. If o is greater than or equal to h, then e plus h storm to e, b plus m storm to b. End. If o is less than or equal to g, then e plus g storm to e, a plus n storm to a, and pixel on at b comma a and then three ends here display your shots in a colon and display the number of shots you took so uh there wasn't a lot that uh you probably caught uh if you actually do read the wikipedia page about bressingham's lying algorithm it'll make a little bit more sense but in a sense there are pixels all over the screen and to determine uh whether which pixel you fill in if you're making a line if there's an error term and every time it gets added to it, and if it's more than half of the pixel, it goes to the next one in the Y direction. And that probably didn't make much sense. My description was probably not great, but if you do read the page, it makes a lot more sense. And it even gives you some pseudocode that you can read and look at that kind of stuff. So that is the end of the program. Um, there's not much to it. I think it's only five or 600 some bytes. So it's a relatively small program and it's pretty fun to play. So with that, that is the conclusion of today's video. I hope you did enjoy. If you really liked the video, you can consider subscribing. It's up to you. But other than that, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you in the next one.